From legendary locals we all know to people you should get to know. Follow Ipswich Today on your favourite app and never miss an episode. Or go to ipswichtoday.com.au Coming up, can shopping for Christmas mid-year save you money? Consumer expert Park Tai Chon from UniSQ joins the show. He'll share tips on how best to save money at the mid-year sales. Also in this episode, Sister City Relationship Strong and Westmorton Health wants your help. It's Saturday, June 8, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. When do you start your Christmas shopping? It's never too early for some. But does it save you money in the long term? University of Southern Queensland Associate Professor Park Tai Chon is an expert on consumer behaviour and he joins the show. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today, Park. Thank you so much for having me. The idea of starting in June to buy presents for Christmas is not a new one. Do you know how far back shopping for Christmas mid-year began? I would say it's moved back about 40 years ago that the, the trend started to happen in the Europe, but it's become much more popular in Australia because, uh, let's face it, it's a lot warmer here during the real Christmas for us during the December compared to uh, June or July where it's much cooler months. Is there any data to show what percentage of the Australian population shops at this time of year for Christmas? I don't have the information on the, the actual data, but I know that there are a lot of Australian actually shop, shop in the mid-year. Partly is because of the promotion and the discount of the mid-year sale for the general goods and products. And some of them even hold on to whatever they buy now and they can use in the in the coming Christmas or as a gift to give it to other people. So it's not just limited to the Christmas products, but other products as well. Yes, yeah, so the department stores certainly encourage us to shop early, especially for toys and gadgets. How successful have these campaigns been? So the original idea of this Christmas in June or Christmas in July or mid-year sale that we see is because of the retail want to increase their sale. That is the first one. But the key is to increase their sale and get rid of the old stock that they have in their inventory. Because as we know, inventory, if, if, they, if this retailer holds a lot of products in their store, it costs them money because of the space costs money. Therefore, they want to get rid of the old one and that they can introduce the new one when the new season comes. So they use this mid-year sale uh, as an opportunity to get rid of these products and also to be benefit for their tax as well, uh, their financial years. Um, is it very effective? Yes, it is very effective. Like starting from early June, which is like right now until end of July, we will see a lot of store that they do 50% off, 60% off right now. And then when it's very close to the end of July, we might see something like extra 10 or 20 percent off on top of the price that is already on sale so yes there will be a lot of people jump to buy the 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 deal the good deal those discount numbers are are quite high and with talk of money being tight at the moment is there a possibility they might be uh, less effective this year well with the cost uh high cost of living Personally, I think uh, if people plan to buy a big Christmas tree or Christmas decoration, it's actually a smart idea to spend some money now, if it if it's not too expensive. Because obviously, if we can get it half price, why don't we buy now and then we hold for, if we want to do Christmas in June, we can do one and then one more at the end of the year. So in my family, and I know a lot of people, actually, they do a lot of early shopping and then they hold on to those products and then give out when when it is necessary. You've touched on this in one of your previous answers, but if you can't afford to shop now, what are the most popular categories? If we can uh, afford to shop now, so uh, a lot of things that is good is clothes, clothing, um, you know, go out clothes, like the staying home clothes. That is a very good thing to, uh, as a good product to give to other people. Otherwise, it would be some type of decoration as well. Um, But in the recent years, um, I have some data to uh, to, to point out on this as well. Mm-hmm. One of the research that we did in the uh, online digital marketing, uh, but this the data is come from the US sample. So we did a survey to customer of uh, nine 
18 to 29 years old people, it's showing that 90% of the people before they purchase the products, uh, they will look at some type of review online or social media comments from other customer, like for before they go do this um, um, big deal because they want to make sure that the products that they're going to get will be like a good quality, although they they can't see it. Um, and I must say a lot of these products actually um, purchase happening online uh, comparing to the face-to-face for the Christmas shopping uh, in, in terms of the Christmas in June. There's no doubt online shopping has caught on. Can real savings be made or is it just smoke and mirrors from the retailers? You talked about those 50, 60 percent off, but uh, in recent years, I've noticed uh, similar sort of bargains in November. Is that competing with this time of year too? I would say so, yes. Uh, In um, June, July is one big time of the sale and then there will be another one in November and December and sometimes we see that one called Black Friday and then the Boxing Day as well. we might also have to wash out though, because there are some products that created for the purpose of discount, being discount. So, you know, there are some products that they, they, they price it very high and then they just mark down for like 40%, 50% to make us feel like it's cheap, mm-hmm. but maybe they're actually intended to sell at that price for the beginning. The old lay-by system, I don't hear a lot about it these days. It was widely used in the 60s and 70s. Is it still popular today? It is, and it's, in fact, I think it's even popular than ever before. If you, uh, I'm sure that we have heard, maybe we not call it lay-by now. Lay-by would be some, for some specific brand that they use, but um, now that we might see something like buy now, pay later, those type of things, or dress now, pay later, th- those those type of other type of online brand that is, is coming to place. So the way it works is that we... It's something like a small personal loan where we buy some products and then we pay them back in four different payments, something like that. And if we can make, if we cannot pay on time, we then have to pay the interest. So it's kind of like we borrow the money from the future and buy something small uh, now. So they, they, they are this still available and it's become very popular because it is now just through an app, like a mobile phone application that you can just download and then tap and go, which which can actually be um, good and bad. The yes, bad it's, is, it's easy money, know. but you've got to pay it back. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. <laughs> what would be your number one piece of advice on how to save money on Christmas presents and food? So I, I would say the, the best suggestion would be um, before we buy anything, I would suggest to check um, – if we can, we can check a few um, website or a few store to see which have the best overall value deal. The word overall value and deal is not just about the price, but it's about the quality of the products that we receive and also the location that you can buy. Because sometimes, let's say, if I have to drive for 20 minutes, to, to go and grab something versus is five minutes away, maybe that five minutes away is have the overall better value uh, for myself. Mm. And then before we buy something, we should have a second thought whether we actually want these products or we need these products because sometimes we see it, oh, it's very cheap. We just grab it, but it's end up expiring in our you know kitchen. We're all slaves to that consumer marketing. Some great exactly. tips there for uh, for saving on Christmas shopping. University of Southern Queensland's Park Tai Chon, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you so much for having me. Ipswich City Council this week welcomed a delegation from sister city Nerima City, Japan to help update the original design for Nerima Gardens in Queen's Park. The six-member delegation represents the Nerima Gardens Renovation Task Force, which is working with council officers including landscape architects, open space planners and field service officers to map out the future of Nerima Gardens, which aims to resolve the bat problem. Nerima Gardens opened in 2001 and features a careful balance between local and Japanese characteristics and natural elements from both cities. West Morton Health is seeking your help if you use the facilities. The hospital's research and innovation arm would love to hear from you. The health service is recruiting community members for its Consumer and Community Research Council Consumers in Research Link Program and Human Research Ethics Committee. 
Westmorton Health undertakes a range of research projects across all areas of healthcare, including emergency and critical care, mental health, maternity services, elder care and First Nations health. The newly established Research Council meets quarterly to discuss current Westmorton Health research, as well as research strategies and priorities. The Consumers in Research Link program connects clinical staff undertaking research with consumers who have an interest in or lived experience of clinical care in the research area. The Human Research Ethics Committee meets eight times a year to review applications by researchers to undertake projects in Westmorton Health, making sure research upholds patient safety, privacy and consent before it commences. Expressions of interest to join the LINK program, Research Council and Ethics Committee are open now. Westmorton Health Director of Research and Innovation, Christopher Hicks, said having consumers involved would put patients at the forefront of health research in the region. And that's it for this episode. Just a reminder, you will find handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. Enjoying Ipswich today? Please share the love on your socials.